Hi everyone, I have been warned never to address inspiring philosophy or Johannan Rots. So let's do that. Let me start by pointing out that I don't think these guys are idiots of the type I usually address. They believe things I don't. They have metaphysical views that I disagree with. They make claims that I will argue are false, but not Jews are from space falls or the Earth is 6,000 years old falls. Basically, I'll ignore most of the claims they make as I find them irrelevant. Talking about metaphysics often comes down to arguing about claims that can't be tested anyway and that have no practical use, so there's really no way to know who's right and who's wrong. As such, I'll focus on the claims that actually do matter, and I'll try not to come off as a condescending asshole. And let's see how long that'll last. Basically, for those who don't know about these guys, they promote something called theistic idealism. They're under the impression that quantum mechanics disproves... Come back, I'll try to keep it simple. As I was trying to say, they're under the impression that quantum mechanics disproves materialism, and by extension, realism, and thus proves, or at least strongly indicates, idealism. Materialism was the view of many scientists at the turn of the 20th century. This simplistic view that all that existed was matter and energy, and the rearrangements of it, is the extreme view of realism. Realism is a general belief accepted by many today, that a physical reality exists independent of observation. And roughly 100 years ago, most held to one of these two views, rejecting the opposing view idealism, the view that reality is a mental construct and doesn't exist independent of observation. Thank you, Inspiring Philosophy, for defining your terms. I can't tell you how much I appreciate that. But, let's be clear on this, you define realism as physical reality exists, independent of observation. Okay, that's not what realism means in quantum mechanics. In quantum mechanics, what I will refer to as quantum realism for the sake of clarity, means that the state of a quantum system is determined. It is distinct. It exists independent of observation. The system exists in a particular state, even when it's not being observed. For many back then, their understanding of physics seemed to favor this side of the spectrum, firmly believing it buried idealism. However, this realistic worldview was shaken with the advent of quantum mechanics. Matter was thought to be tiny particles that existed independent of our observation. However, the equations of quantum mechanics and the results of the double slit experiment changed that. The conclusion was drawn that the very act of observing caused a wave function to collapse and create the existence of matter, either in the state of particles or as a wave. No, didn't you pay attention to Dr. Quantum from the clip from What the Bleep Do We Know that you just subjected me to? Look, when What the Bleep gets it right and you don't, you really need to stop talking about quantum mechanics. Dr. Quantum explicitly explained that a particle will act as a wave if it's not observed, but as a particle if it is observed. Observation, which simply means interaction with another system, affects the state of a quantum system, such as an electron. It doesn't bring the system into existence. If it didn't exist to begin with, it couldn't possibly have been observed. According to the Schrodinger equation, which I doubt you understand, Independent of observation, particles exist in a state of a wave function, which is a series of potentialities, rather than actual objects. Told ya. The Schrodinger equation doesn't say that a particle is a wave function or exists as a wave function. It simply uses the wave function to describe how the state of a quantum system changes over time. The Schrodinger equation is one of the first things you learn about when you take an introductory course in quantum mechanics as an undergraduate. Basically, if you don't know what this means, please do everyone a favor. Don't ever talk about quantum mechanics. Ever. Some like Einstein and Schrodinger were deeply troubled by the results of quantum mechanics. So in 1935, Einstein and two of his colleagues proposed a thought experiment to debunk quantum mechanics. They proposed that if you placed two particles in a joint superposition and then separated them by a great distance, an observation of one would instantly affect the other which Einstein called a spooky action at a distance. The point was the observation of one couldn't affect the other instantly, because information couldn't travel faster than the speed of light. If it did, then relativity would be violated. Right, that's the principle of locality. So instead, there must be some physical, undiscovered, local, hidden variable that was actually affecting them 
instead of our observation. Well, let me try to explain this using an analogy. I'll take two dice, one black and one white, and let them represent two entangled particles. I shake them up, and without looking, I separate them, one in either hand. Now, if I look in my right hand and I find the white one there, I know instantly that the black one is in my left hand. This would be true even if the dice were separated by billions of light years. If the one over here is white, I know that the other one is black, and I will know this instantly. Of course, this analogy assumes what I earlier referred to as quantum realism. That is, the dice exist in distinct states independent of observation. One is white, one is black, but which one is which is a hidden variable. If realism, that is, quantum realism, is true, then the principle of locality isn't violated because no information travels between the particles. Finding the white die is not what turned the other one black. It was black all along. In other words, if quantum realism is true, then there is no need for any spooky action at a distance, so quantum mechanics doesn't violate relativity in that case. If this inequality was shown to be false, then the local hidden variable theories would be debunked. No, Bell's inequality being violated means that quantum mechanics violates local realism, which means that the principle of locality and quantum realism cannot both be true. In other words, you can have a theory that doesn't violate relativity, or you can have hidden variables, but you can't have both. Bell's inequality was violated. Einstein's spooky action at a distance was real. This confirmed what quantum mechanics was telling us. Prior to measurement, objects have no defined properties or location. How the hell did you get to that? All we've established is that you can't have both locality and realism. Are you saying that Bell's theorem says that we can't have either? So you don't know what the Schrodinger equation is and you don't understand Bell's theorem. And you still think you're ready to tell the world about the immense metaphysical and even theological implications of quantum mechanics? You can't assess the philosophical implications, or scientific ones for that matter, of a theory you don't even have a basic understanding of. I'm sorry, IP. You, you're not the low-hanging fruit I'm used to dealing with. You don't make the same stupid arguments all the other apologists make, and this borderline between physics and philosophy is something I find really interesting myself, and so complicated that when I watch your videos and try to find responses to them, come up, to, come up with responses to your claims, rather, I find that my own knowledge is being tested, and my beliefs are being tested as well, and I really like that. Now, you do get things wrong, but your mistakes are understandable, because this is complicated stuff. And it's not like you're pulling things completely out of your ass. The act of a conscious observer creates the existence of the physical objects and the properties they entail. Conscious. Okay, you know what I said about you not pulling things completely out of your ass? Yeah, I take that back. You just went full Deepak, man. Never go full Deepak. But it doesn't end there, because many propose the existence of non-local hidden variables in Leggett's inequality. However, in 2007, they were also falsified. This time by Anton Zellinger and his team. The results sent shockwaves, and physics world went so far as to say this means quantum physics says goodbye to reality. This is either a case of a science journalist not knowing what he's talking about, or it's a play on words. But look, I'm going to save time here and say that I like locality, so I don't really mind giving up realism. But again, realism doesn't refer to metaphysical realism. It refers to quantum realism, that a quantum system exists in a distinct state independent of observation. The existence of the system, or the rest of the universe for that matter, is not in question. Now many have tried to get around this by trying to separate the quantum world from the macro world. The macro realism does emerge from quantum physics, so you cannot separate the two. The macro world is built by the quantum world. This is not in dispute, but if you think this means that a planet is no different than an electron, then think again. The equations of quantum mechanics are reduced to those of classical physics at macroscopic scales. Sure, you can find wave-like properties in atoms, even molecules, 
but they're completely negligible in an object consisting of trillions upon trillions of them. A golf ball is never going to tunnel through a wall or interfere with itself as it goes through a double slit. Simply put, this is because all the randomness of the quantum world cancels out at large scales. Another escape route many materialists use is to hold to the many world interpretations of quantum mechanics, which basically argues there is no collapse of the wave function upon measurement, but that every possibility splits off into different worlds. But it is riddled with problems, unlike the idealist understanding, and it is an apparent violation of Occam's razor, as entities are not to be multiplied beyond necessity. Introducing a large number of worlds that we also cannot detect is an extreme violation of this. Entities here refers to assumptions. If I assume the existence of an infinite number of worlds, I am making one assumption, not an infinite number of them. In fact, there's currently no interpretation of quantum mechanics that makes fewer assumptions than many worlds. Many worlds assumes that a quantum system exists not in one distinct state, but in every possible state, each within its own world. In other words, it doesn't have to assume that wave functions exist as real objects or that the observer has any special function. Measurement simply means learning which world one is in. Compare this to the Copenhagen interpretation, which assumes, without any explanation, that wave functions exist as real objects and that observation causes wave function collapse. Hey, it doesn't have to make sense. Just shut up and do the math. Now, your interpretation assumes that wave functions exist as real objects, despite there being no such thing as a real object. Uh, a wizard did it. That observation causes wave function collapse, that observation only counts if the observer is conscious, and that consciousness is fundamental to reality. That means that we have to find an explanation to how reality could exist in the first place, since a consciousness would have to exist within some kind of reality. But that's no problem. A wizard did it. Literally. But how could this wizard exist absent a pre-existing reality created by another conscious being within which he could exist? Simple. It's magic, bitch. I don't have to explain it. Yes, it's okay to assume that it just is that way, but compare it to many worlds. We already know that one world exists. We don't know of any minds that exist without there being a reality within which they can exist. In fact, we don't even know of any mind that can exist without a physical brain that is the product of billions of years of evolution. Regarding many worlds, we could assume that there are additional worlds, or we could assume that since we only know of one, there simply can't be any others. If I had to bet on one of the two... I'd pick option one in a heartbeat. Although I'd prefer to remain agnostic on this point and assume neither option, I can't deny that assuming that our world is just one of a potentially infinite number of worlds is by far the most humble assumption of any of the ones I've listed here. And the fact that it's the only assumption necessary in order to have a working interpretation of quantum theory means that, yes, I do think that many worlds, or at least some decoherence-based interpretation, is most likely to be the correct one. Not in spite of Occam's razor, but to a large extent, because of it. Given the scientific evidence that has led us this far, what other inference does this lead to? Of course, one can always refuse to go with us to the logical conclusion, but that does not refute the conclusion or change it. Science has not buried God, it has revealed him, and with it buried materialism. It remains now only in the fantasy of materialists. What you've presented here is a false dichotomy. Classical materialism, or idealism. Either reality is made up of interactions of objects that at their most fundamental level are made up of little balls that are simply smaller versions of macroscopic ones, or reality is just a mental construct. Those are not the only two options. On behalf of scientifically literate materialists, we believe that we live in something we label the material or natural world or physical reality and we observe that there exists something within this reality that we label matter. Matter has properties, and things made of matter interact. We believe that everything within the natural world can be reduced to matter, its properties, and its interactions, because it certainly looks that way. We have a word for things that don't reduce to matter, its properties, and its interactions. Magic. When you can show me magic and demonstrate that it really is magic, 
then I'll give up materialism. See ya.